Hi, my name is Ricardo Azevedo, and in today's tape, we're going to be discussing shooting. What is shooting? Well, shooting opposed to throwing is the art of putting the ball on a goal. Sometimes an art almost lost to today's shooters at times, at least seems that way. Uh, in shooting, the important thing is how we deliver the ball, how is the ball put in the goal. We always have the discussion is if we throw the ball, if we shoot the ball. Throwers, I think the majority of our uh, water polo players have a tendency to be throwers more than shooters because they just shoot the ball for power. I think we have, the discussion comes to power and accuracy. Um, when we deal with the NBA, for example, in basketball, um, they did a great system. They actually reward accuracy more than react, they uh, reward power. Uh, slam dunk in, in basketball, it's a power move, yet is only worth two points where a three-point shot from outside the three-point line, obviously, it's an accuracy move and that's worth three points. And that's always a way I like to illustrate to people that accuracy, it is more important than power. Not that power is not important, but accuracy, in my opinion, is more important than that. So when we're dealing with shooting, these are the things we have to go through our minds as we are developing our shooters. The things that we start thinking about is how do we develop power? How do we develop accuracy? What do we do to make that person a better shooter? What do we do to take them away from being a thrower and become a shooter? Okay, here's some of the things we're gonna do. But first of all, I need a ball. So again, let's have a ball right here. Okay, when are we first practicing our shooting, the first thing we go through our mind is, what is needed to become a good shooter? Well, the first thing is, let's, let's again put it in three, three points. The first point, first point about being a good shooter is you can't think as you're shooting the ball. You cannot waste your time thinking on what you're thinking about doing. By that time, it's too late. You need to react. So instead of thinking on the first point, just react. React to the shot, realize what's open, and then deliver. So I call my first point is, don't think as you shoot. Our second point is, react and deliver. And the third point is, as you look at the shoot, as you see the shot, what I call sight. You see what's open, sight the ball, and then just visualize the ball into the goal. It is very important that you do that. So again, going over the three points again, when you first see a ball, and you get the ball, and you're going to shoot the ball, don't think. Just look at the cage, sight, visualize it, and then just deliver the ball. That's how you build a shooter. So what we need to do is develop drills that will make the shooter practice all these things. So when he comes to a game situation, he does not wait two or three seconds to deliver a ball. He knows that he has been in that situation and he's just going to put the ball on the goal. So that, that is very important. The drills that we work with, and when we get to the pool, we're going to be showing each one of them specifically. The drills that we work with, first of all, is drills where we work on special deliveries. So we deliver, just delivering the ball right out of our socket. So you take the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist, and the hand, as we covered earlier in our passing tapes, we have take the ball and we'll just deliver that shot. So we must work on delivery points because as we're delivering the shot into the cage, the goalie sees the ball coming from a different aspect. So we must change that goalie's view. If we always deliver the ball from the same point, they'll have a tendency to make the goalie, make the goalie have an easier job to pick that ball up. So we will deliver the, we will change the point of delivery. We will move the ball back and to the side and to the, a little bit to the other side, have more rotation with the torso, or have what we call disguise moves. Now, the disguise moves we will be talking about in about a minute. So let's skip that for a second. Just think of the other things I said. Points of delivery. What are points of delivery? Points of delivery is the positions that you put the ball. If the ball is, is released, let's say, from the same position that your head is, that, the goalie has that view. If I move that ball back, the goalie still has basically the same view, but I have gained a foot and a half of delivery on the ball, and that might just trick the goalie enough on his coming out to just, just beat him on that. So that's important that you change the point of delivery, not just back and forth, but sometimes up or down, or sometimes with a change of your torso. So instead of your torso being delivered this way, for example, you may change your torso a little bit more, so now your delivery will take a little bit longer to take place. And uh, you see that a lot in baseball pitchers. You see that a lot in quarterbacks. Well, they'll disguise their move by taking an extra step or by taking a, a different, like say, for example, uh, if you're a baseball fan, a Fernando Valenzuela, where he would actually turn his back 
to the pitcher almost and then move his head in different ways just to give that little bit of a hitch so the, the, you know, the, the batter, let's say, cannot pick up the ball as fast. And that's basically what you're trying to do as a shooter is to change your points of delivery, change your siding position so the goalie cannot key on one move only. Okay? And then, of course, the next thing is how do we develop power? Power comes mostly from your hip, lower back, and leg position. The leg generates a little bit of the power. The, the legs basically generate with the power that's going to come with the ball. Then your hips and your lower back are actually what's going to whip the ball into shape. So if I'm a shooter and I just shoot the ball from the top part, that would be like a pitcher pitching without legs. So if I want to get full power out of my whole body, I must start the shot from a lower part of my body and by using my legs, by f using full rotation of the hips, and then following through with my torso, my shoulders, my elbows, and my wrists, I will get power on that. Again, there are many types of drills that will develop power as it needed. We try to go through the, the, the type of drills that will develop lower power, back power, will develop power in your shoulders and your elbows and your wrists. It's very important that when you are following through, you check that power. So as you set your drills, Try to check to see if the player is developing power as it's needed. Many times when you're doing this type of drills, players are, are, are just important. They, they think that the only important thing to do is for them to throw the ball as hard as they can into the goal. When a lot of times that's not the point. The point is to develop the power so as the ball is just flowing out of his, his hands with just as much power if he was overthrowing the ball. And that sometimes is something that's very hard to, to explain to a player that say, hey, you know, if you throw the ball with just your arm alone, all you're using is about 30% of your throwing motion. Where if you throw the ball all the way from your lower thigh, you know, through your hips and through your back and through your shoulders, elbows, and hands, now using 100% motion. And that's very important. So again, we talked about just the attitude, the how to pass the ball, and moving the delivery point. Now we talked about power, and now come the third thing. That's very important. And I think we, our players need to use that a lot more to their advantage. And that is, how to disguise our motions. In water polo, we got some terms. They're very common, used by coaches and by players. The first one is faking, faking the ball. Well, faking the ball, as the name determines, is any time you try to fake the goalie to think that you're going to shoot the ball. So faking is a terminology very much used in the water polo. The second one is you just say move the ball. Moving the ball most of the time means you are passing to create a new shot. I use three more terminologies that we will explain to you in a second. I use the terminology of working the ball, I use the terminology what I call break, and I use the terminology what I call cut. Okay? So the five things that I'm going to be talking about right now would be faking, moving the ball, working, cutting, and breaking. Those are the five things that I use in my, let's say, disguising the shot. Faking is any time you take the ball and you basically are moving the ball so the goalie cannot get one side of the ball. There are many thousands of different types of fakes. Uh, most of the times the most common fakes we have is what we call just regular ball fakes, when you just basically move the ball around. We have arm fakes, and that is any time you move your body, and your arm I should say, into the different positions. So I have the, uh, the arm, and I constantly move my arm into different positions. Then I have what's called body fakes. Body fakes is any time you use your body outside of your arm, to create a shot. So for example, if I see that the goal is really coming out of the goal, I might throw, for example, a little shoulder hit and throw my body one way and see if he follows my body and then release the ball the other way. Uh, one of the great shooters of all time, Horkai from Hungary, used to have a very, di very distinguished fake and they used to move his head as a fake. So as he was faking the ball here, he would move his head one way and try to bring the goalie with his head and then throw the ball the other way. That will qualify as a body fake. Each player tr should develop, and not just copy fakes, but should develop their own technique of fakes. Um, a six foot five, a six foot six player can use body fakes to their advantage a lot more, let's say, than a 5'11 and a six foot uh, player. A 5'11 and six foot player will rely a lot more on quickness and cut moves than, let's say, a six foot five, six foot six player. So again, faking, very simple. Going back to what we said, anytime you move the ball, move your arm or move your body to try to disguise the goalie to see where the ball is coming from. Moving the ball is anytime you just use a pass as a disguising technique. 
So if I have my partner that I'm passing on the right and I see that the goal is on me, I might move the ball to my pass to my partner to get a right back to shoot the ball at the goalie. By that, what I'm doing is I'm passing the ball, hoping that the goalie will move his body position enough that when I get the ball back, he cannot set himself as fast as I can set myself. So that's the whole idea of moving the ball around. You see t coaches say constantly, move the ball on the top. This is what we're talking about. When we say move the ball on the top, what we're really saying is move the goalie and the goal. That's what the whole idea is. When I say work, is many times I think the goalies are starting to get smart about this, and I think what the goalies do is that they know you're trying to move the ball, they know you're trying to create different situations. So what they're starting to do now is that the goalies look at a certain ang triangle. What the goalie looks at, he looks at the ball at your head and your, shoulder, and your elbow. When he looks at this triangle here, he knows that when you move your body away from that triangle, he will not guess which side you're going. He stays in the middle of that. So when I say work the ball is that I will teach my players to take the ball in that triangle and twist it. So if I am in this position, I will work the ball into another different triangle. I'll move it completely to this side. Or I'll move completely to this side. Like I'm going to pass the ball, but yet I'll move from this side into a shooting position again, into another position, into a shooting position. So what I've done is I've created something between moving the ball and faking. And that may have a tendency sometimes to make the goalie think, hey, is he going to move the ball or is he going to shoot the ball? And that hesitation might give you an advantage. Then looking over tapes again, I realize that that's not enough. Some goalies, again, can read that pretty well. Then what we do is we create what we call break motions. Okay, break motions is when you take a shot. So if your fake is here and then you deliver the ball here, what I will do is that I'll create exercise where I'll break this person motion two, maybe two, three, four times. So I'll take his motion, I'll go from here into a break, forward, break, forward. What that will do is that give me hesitation moves into his own fake. And that makes the goalie think he can come in straight, he can stop once, then go forward, he can stop twice, then go forward. And that just makes the goalie again think that he cannot use his maximum move to come block the shot. So that will make goalies use their hands to go up a lot more and they'll not allow him to use their reflexes as much. So that's what I call a break fake. Or I try not to use the fake because they have a tendency to confuse the players. I would just say breaking. That's when I say, hey, we're going to practice breaking. They know exactly what I'm talking about. And the last one is what I call cutting. Cutting is when you create a set of fakes. You create a pattern of fakes and then cut that in half. So for example, if I take the ball and I'm going to shoot the ball now, and, and I know this goal, and I'll go with, let's say, one and two, and then on the third one, I'm going to come up with a shot. What I do is, I'll let the goalie think this is what I'm doing. The first time I'll come up, I'll come up one, I'll come up twice, then I'll shoot the ball. On the second time, I'll do what I call cut, and that is, I'll go one, and I'll go two quick ones, and then deliver the ball. So again, the goalie cannot set on any pattern. So when we recap everything that we talked about today, is what we're trying to do is, again, First of all, realize that a shooter is more important than a thrower. Realize that accuracy is much better than power. And when we are talking about shooting, we are talking about using your accuracy and power to put the ball where the opening is. We're talking about faking. That's the use of movements to get the goalie to move and you can put the ball in the open space. We're dealing with movement when we're using other people to pass the ball to to again reset the goalie and then you can beat him before he's set. We're talking about working. Working is again when you are disguising your passing moves and your shooting moves and the goalie again cannot set himself into that. Fourth, we're talking about breaking. Again, breaking extremely important. Break your motions. Break your speed in your motions. Use a slow to fast. Use a fast to slow. Use a slow to slow. Okay? Uh, in a little, you know, if we can explain a little bit easier for you guys to understand sometimes is like a change up in baseball. It looks like a fast ball but comes out a curve ball. That's the same thing. It might look like a real over wind up type shot. It's really coming in hard and I'll break it and then I'll throw the shot just a little bit easier and that because the goalie times itself on that initial move. No goalie can time itself into the, the latest move. He times himself into the long move. He is up now and when I stop, he needs to be coming down. And then I'll just release the ball, and that's where I'll break the goalie. Fifth, of course, is the cutting. 
use the cutting to your advantage. Don't let the goalie set your own pattern. Many times we will discuss with players that will go into Europe, and we have quite a few players that I work with, or they'll go to Europe, or they'll go into the national championships, or their high school, or whatever it is, and they'll be very, very successful. They'll be extremely successful with some of their shots that we have created. But then they find out the goalies are starting to read those shots real well, and they come to me and say, well, what am I going to do? I've, tr I've tried to shot now, and goals are starting to block that. And I says, well, that is because your shots were created of a year ago, but now goalies realize those shots, and you need to do is you need to cut and break some of these shots and create new ones. So that's very, very important. So when designing your shooting workout, do not rely on one or two or three shooting drills. Change your shooting drills on every single workout. In a week's workout, for example, I'll use between 30 to 45 minutes on shooting because we already did 45 to an hour on passing. And again, as I said before on the other tape, a good shooter, all it is is a great passer. Okay? So what we try to do is, again, 45 minutes to an hour of passing, and then I get into my shooting, I'm going to 45 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes on my shooting. And as you develop that, use your shooting from about five to seven minutes, five to seven minute drills. Do not have a guy shoot the same shot for a half an hour. Not only is it not good for his shoulders, but it's also very boring. And the players will lose concentration and you lose what you're trying to accomplish. Keep the drills between five and seven minutes and change it constantly. Try not to use the same drill twice in the day after day. Like if you use one drill on Wednesday, do not use that drill again until maybe Wednesday. So that on Monday and Wednesday and Friday, for example, use different ones on Tuesday and Thursdays. That way you constantly are making the players adjust, you're constantly making the players think, concentrate, and executing what you're trying to do. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to move to the pool and we're going to work in all these different drill techniques, all these different shooting techniques and go from there. All right, let's go to the pool and see what we can do. In all our shooting uh, workouts, we always start the first five minutes with players just picking the ball up and shooting it, and not thinking about it, just picking it up and shooting. So what I'll be doing in the next couple minutes will be describing more or less what the players are trying to accomplish. So again, here we have the players are about eight to ten meters out. They just basically pick up the ball and throw it at the corners. They're not trying to skip the ball, they're not trying to they're not worrying about what the goalie is doing, they're just worrying about what they're throwing the ball. As you can see, most of the shots are going, almost all the shots are going right at the corner areas. Okay, let's watch the players for a while. At this point, we're not, we do not encourage the players to fake at all and just to pick up the ball and shoot it. That's all we need to do, just pick up the ball and shoot. I also use this time for the first five minutes, as the players pick up the ball and shoot, I tell the players exactly what they're doing wrong if their elbows are low, if they're not coming up high out of the water, um, if, if they're laying too much on their side, that's the time for you to do a lot of talking with your players and uh, tell them exactly what they're doing wrong. It's important that they feel comfortable as they shoot the ball and it's important that they shoot with, with accuracy and power. So uh, that's the time for you to do a lot of talking with your players. Be sure you constantly emphasize to your players that it's not important if the goalie is making the block or if the goalie, if the goalie <clears throat> is uh, touching the ball. What's important at this time is that he's working on the finesse, is working on the mechanics of your shot. That's the best way to warm up. You should always warm up between 8 to 10 meter shot. Now we'll start looking 
at each individual shot. Now we got a left-hander. He's just basically watch. He's picking the ball up. Uh, he has a tight delivery, so he just picks the ball up. He shoots with tremendous quickness, but not a lot of range. So this is a time where you do you study the player's delivery and uh, talk to the players and point out the things that he's doing wrong. Okay. On that situation there, you see the player, the ball just totally got away from his wrist and just took off on him. Uh, here we go, the next player. It's a much taller player, so you have a large range on his shots. He'll come up. He has excellent range. Okay, so notice the body out of the water. He comes way up. He, he has a little bit of an elbow delivery. He's, he's, you notice that his arm's a little bit too bent up. So he needs to stretch that out, and there you go. That one was better. He straightens it up the arm, um, and later on in the tape, we'll be watching a tremendous shot from the outside, and uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. So as you see, again, good range, uh, using, using his legs and moving the body up. Now we have a player that shoots the ball with a lot of um, quickness, and good body movement. Watch his body, how he will move right to left as he's shooting the ball. He starts the ball in one lane and then moves the ball to the right and his left. There you go. Okay, good quickness on his wrist and uh, good upper body strength. Notice that he's almost falling forward after he finishes the shot. One last one. Watch the body position. He's up. There you go. He's leaning forward. He's leaning totally forward when he shoots the ball. Okay, now we have a player that shoots a little bit a lot, a lot with his back. He brings the ball way back and have a good torso rotation. Uh, again, he's a smaller player, so he needs to use all the back that he can. He brings the ball way back and just really rotates his shoulders. As a shooter, you must understand where do you fit in. If you're a six foot five, or if you're a six foot two, or if you're five foot eleven, you need to figure out where do you fit in and develop a shot that is according to your body, is according to your motions, according to you, to you in particular. Here we have a broken motion. He has a natural broken motion that he picks up the ball, and he has like a hitch as he shoots the ball. Watch how he he has like a natural hitch. He does it just. Is it, every time he picks up the ball, he, he does, he's not fluid. He doesn't pick it up and shoot it. It's a good uh, thing to have, but he also needs to learn how to shoot the ball a little bit quicker. It's something that we need to be working on constantly and, and not let a player just develop one shot only. He needs to develop one or two or three different shots. So now we, we have a little bit more of a side step there on that one, uh, but he has too much of a hitch there. He needs to, to change his shots a little more often. Okay, now we have what we call a forearm shooter. Everything he does is right at his forearm. Okay, that one just got away from him. Here we go. Everything is right on his forearm. He has a good base on the water, uh, and he shoots mainly with his forearm. It's a good torso rotation, nice power, and everything's coming right out of his forearm. Forearm shooters have a tendency sometimes to be a little bit wild because he needs, they need to put everything they have into a shot. So again, forearm shooters have a tendency to be a little bit wild. What you need to do is to make sure to constantly remind them to follow through on the ball and not stop early. Okay, and they need to follow through all the time. Now we're going to have the players work the ball a little bit. And notice that the, what we do now is that he, they work the ball high, then they will drop the ball, pick it up, and shoot it. There you go. Take the ball to the highest spot possible, then drop the ball, pick it up, and shoot it. Again, here we go. He picks it up, he fakes it, drops it, picks it up, and shoots the ball. The reason we do this, this is the best way to check on the player's body position. Um, 
in a game, a player must realize that at times he's going to be knocked off position or he's going to be pushed away from position. So he must learn how to control his body and always bring it back to the position that he's supposed to be in. So with this drill, is a, I find is the best way for me to check what kind of body position he has. Because the moment he drops the ball, you can see where he starts having trouble with. So let's look one player at a time. Okay, here we go. Okay, he worked the ball, dropped it. Okay, notice that when he shot the ball the second time, he's a lot lower than when he started faking the ball. Here we go, a nice big fake, never dropped the ball. That was the wrong thing to do. Okay, here he comes. A big high fake, drops it. You notice that when he shoots the ball, you notice his left hand is a little bit uh, out of the water a little bit too much. Up high, but then when he shoots the ball, okay, let's see if we can see that again. Hold on. On this player, watch how you come up way high. It looks real good on the fake, but then on the shot, he's really low on the water. It looks almost like he's falling back. So that's not good to do. You want to make sure that you, as you rise to, to fake the ball, you should also rise to shoot the ball. So, okay, here go a nice fake, a uh, nice shot. Build up high, drops it, and then shoots the ball fairly low. Okay, big old fake. He drops the ball this time, picks it up, and shoots it. Notice that almost every time that the shot is not as high as the fake. So uh, what we need to work on is you need to constantly remind these players that if, if the shot looks just like the fake and the fake looks just like the shot, it's a lot tougher on the goalie to pick you up. Now we have the players overworking the ball moving laterally. Okay, Notice how the players now every time they don't just pick up the ball and shoot it, now we want them to move laterally, okay? As they go working the ball, remember what we talked about the difference between working and faking. On faking, you're basically just catching the ball and trying to fake the goalie out. When you work, you're basically trying to create a new lane by moving right and left and constantly working the goalie up. Here we have, here's the player, okay? Notice he has a bad hitch. He keeps looking back all the time. You don't necessarily need to do that. You need to constantly keep a look at the goalie. Okay, good, good, high, good, good hesitation moves and he puts the ball away. Okay, again, always good to change speeds, change motion, uh, change everything. Here he goes. See his hitch? Okay, what he needs to do is that he needs to stretch out that hitch a little bit. It's a little bit too tight. He needs to stretch it up. Here we have a real tight delivery. Notice how the ball is never leaves around. The ball is always like around his head. And uh, the problem with that type of delivery is uh, it's easy for the goalie to read that. So. We need to kind of, you know, work on his fake a little bit. Okay, good, got a little bit too much. Okay, again, a back fake. There you go, brought a forward fake to a shot. That's good, good job on that one. He comes again. Notice how he's always looking back. He doesn't need to do that. Again, he's a, he's a forearm shooter. You notice he always kept the ball like right around the forearm area and then just came up with a shot. There you go, good, good hesitation, good. Just he was falling back when he shot the ball. He did the same thing before. He's falling backwards as he's shooting that ball. If he moves forward, that shot's a lot more powerful. Here comes the left hander again. Watch how he keeps the ball right around his head all the time. He needs to straighten that ball up a little bit more. So the shots are real tight. And now what we do is that we have you always moving right shooting left or moving left shooting right so the players are not just moving forward but now they're moving to the side as much as they can um, very important when attacking the drops that you do not only move forward but notice how the players now is laying to his side then he readjusts his body and follows through so he's not just moving forward look he's moving to his right to his right to his right and then shoots the ball the ball escapes and goes too high on that one okay here we go he picks up the ball, he's going right with the ball, he's going right, he's locking the goalie up, and then puts the ball away. It's important at this time that you have your legs to the side a little bit, okay, and have your legs to the side and then follow through when you're shot. Do not shoot off your side, do not shoot off your back. Okay, be sure you're moving, here you go, he's moving to the strong side, then he re he, there you go, he realigns his body and then shoots the ball. It's very important. It's okay to move to the right or move to the left, but it's important to make sure to remember that before you shoot the ball, to get your back back into straight and get your body straight again and then follow through on your shot. Let's watch about four or five players here. 
Notice how they will move right to left, but before they shoot the ball, they will get your, their body straight and follow through. He's moving laterally. There you go, and he comes up with a nice shot. And again, from a from a little bit further angle here, you can see the players as they are moving forward. They're again, moving right or left, moving right or left, and then there you go. That's a nice shot. Notice he just barely misses the bar. You got a high upper corner there, uh, and that's going to put a lot of pressure on that goalie. Here we call it FRG. The player was just. Take two, three hard strokes forward, catch the ball from behind, and follow through. Again, later on the tape, we're going to be showing a couple of examples of this. Again, just take two or three hard strokes, turn around, catch the ball, and shoot it. Don't need to go in your back. The player went in his back a little bit. doesn't need to do that. you got to have confidence on your teammates. Just take two or three strokes, turn around, catch it, and shoot it. Okay, Use that as part of your fake. Your fake is as you're swimming. You turn around, you catch the ball. Shoot. Don't need to fake on that. Just catch it and shoot it. Two or three strokes, turn around, catch it, lines it up, and shoots the ball. Okay, the players are again, they're shooting from about eight to ten meters out every time. It's important to shoot the ball from eight to ten meters. That way when it the game situation comes in, the shot is from usually five or six yards. It's a lot easier for you. If you only practice at five and six yards, then uh, you're not going to be as, as active as a shooter as you should be. So always practice from outside your shooting range. Eight to ten meters should be the range you should be practicing at. Okay, again, moving sideways a little bit, catching the ball from behind and putting it away. Try to use your body as part of your fake. As you go up for the ball, have the player, have the goalie lock on your body and then come up with a fake. On this drill, uh, the ball is thrown from behind. The player is swimming forward. He's not looking. He's not turning around and looking. All he's doing is swimming forward. As he sees the ball, he explodes to the ball, picks it up, and shoots it. Okay? The player sees it. There he goes. He picks it up. He just shoots the ball. Okay, he's swimming forward, there he goes, he sees the ball, picks it up. The player needs to be swimming a little bit more. In that situation, they were not. Uh, he needs to be swimming earlier. There he goes, he sees it, and he explodes through it. The moment he sees the ball, he needs to go at maximum speed and just shoot the ball for the corners. Does not fake, does not hesitate, just picks it up and shoots it. Because remember, as he's swimming to the ball, the goalie is usually trying to find out what kind of lane he's going to have. So. It's important that as he picks up the ball to shoot it right away. There we go. That was a nice corner shot on that one. He sees the ball. He changes directions. He gets to it. He pivots it, turns it, and just lights it up. Very good. Again, intensity is important in this drill. So the moment that you feel that the intensity is dropping, it's a good idea for you to stop, talk a little bit about it, and then get back and do it again. It's a drill that you can do it for, if we're, let's say, if you do it for six, seven minutes, stop for a couple minutes and do six, seven minutes again. Again, there he goes, he sees the ball, looks back, turns around, picks it up, and just shoots the ball. It's an excellent drill to use to finish up counter. It's also a drill to realize that, hey, you know, the best way to, to get the ball going here is to actually get to it, and that before the goalie really sets on your fakes, you explode and put the ball away. Here we go. Picks it up, shoot for the corner. Let's look about four or five more of them. Here he goes. He goes to the ball, he picks it up. Notice that some of these fit right on the corner, very nice. You notice that uh, some of these players are picking the ball up from the top. At that point, it's not really important if it's on the top or the bottom. Uh, when the player is being corralled, when the player is being hassled, yeah, he should pick the ball up from the bottom every time. But in that situation, he's finishing up the counter. He may use the ball, he may use the hand on top of the ball to give him a little bit of a lift also. So uh, let's see if we can see one. There you go. So he actually pushes the ball up to get his body position better. So that's uh, a situation where putting the hand on top is actually good. Sometimes when you pick up the ball, it might be a good idea for you to put a little hesitation move then shoot the ball. 
So it's not that would depend how as you swim, look, you must look at the goal. As he sees the goalie, see what he's doing. If the goalie is, is, is set on you, then maybe you want to throw a little bit of hesitation. On that one he just lost control. He goes for the ball, he looks at the goalie, he picks it up, there. A little hesitation, a little quick fake. Uh, and this type of drill, you should never allow the player to sit there and just fake one, two, three, four times. But uh, if he wants to throw a small hesitation or a broken fake, that's a good time for it. Okay, you got a right hander, he sees it, there you go. Just that change your hands where you carried over from one hand to the other was enough of a fake. Here we go, another one, he picks it up from the top. There you go, he uses a hitch to bring his body up and then shoots the ball. Those are fine, those are good ways to get the goalie locked on you. On this drill what we have is we have three players on the top, we pass the ball around, you always shoot the ball in the quick. Uh, notice that as we're passing the ball around we work on some of the drills that we had in our ball handling uh, tape earlier. Uh, you're passing the ball around, again, you're locking, you always look at the goal, there you go, good nice side pass, nice hesitation fake, picks up from the middle, makes the pass, quick, nice shot, right in the corner, there you go, a bar bar in. That's importance here is, is how well he's moving the ball. Again, not, not faking the ball five, six, seven times, but one, two, three fakes and then cross passing. Again, always shooting the quick. There you go. Good, good locking up with the goalie. Makes it back, locks the goalie up, goes it across. He should not have shot that ball. Uh, again, if you can't shoot it clean, put it right back to the other player. Here we go. Overworking the ball, passing. Okay. Uh, on this type of drill, I like to do it that the moment that the player has actually dropped the ball, start over again because uh, uh, that's really how it happens in the game. You're breaking the sequence, you must start over. Again, nice quick movement. There you go, catch it. Again, same thing. He should have gone back to the other side to shoot the ball quick. Notice that every time we shot the ball quick, we have actually uh, gotten a much better shot than when we overfake the ball. Again, quickness on top, good movement, locking it up, nice broken fakes up high, really looking good there. There you go, nice shot, nice shot. Again, every time it's caught the ball and just caught it and shoot it, you got a much better chance of beating that goalie in this situation. Uh, later on the tape, we're going to have a couple more situations like that where you'll see that by catching and shooting the ball uh, is to your advantage. Good passing, nice kick back with the left hand, uh, good backhand passing, again, nice faking, just looking at the goalie, locking it up, uh, again, bad pass. Okay, the pass you cannot do that. Just uh, you cannot waste an op offensive situation like that. Here we go. In the other group, we'll start. Okay, my, the important thing is that you got to have a good pass before you do anything else. So again, just watch the players. Just quickly, constantly changing. Nice shot. Okay, nice shot. Just shoot the ball quick. Let's watch about three or four of these uh, because those are good to watch to see what the different type of player fakes, uh, the different type of movement that the players will use, and different combinations of passing. Okay, notice on that situation there, they did not use the point man too much. Uh, the reason it's a triangle on the top is so you use all three points of your triangle and not just keep crossing the ball back and forth. Uh, it actually makes it easier for the goalie. You want to use that point man just to make sure that the goalie stops at the middle once in a while. Nice shot. Notice the player sometimes moving laterally just to bring a nice backhand kick and pass. Again, players move laterally, locks the goalie up. Nice shot, nice save. So you must, as you stay in your triangles, notice that the player should always be moving right and left. Don't stay in the same place. Move forward, move back. There you go. Nice movement to the right there. Players catches it, fakes a nice hard, quick shot. Let's just watch two more here.
Okay, nice backhand kick pass, and then nice shot. Over the last 40 minutes, we went over some exercises, some practice of different shooting techniques, uh, different drills to be used to develop shots and to be used in, in the real game. What we'll be going to right now is some actual footage of real games where we'll be showing the shots that we've worked on and we will show those shots two or three times, pointing out the exactness of what we're trying to accomplish. Let's go to those shots now. Our first shot, the player will be catching from behind and shooting the ball. The key points are, watch the shoulder rotation, watch the catch, the wrist, here we go again, the wrist, the shoulder rotation, the legs, the body's up in the air, he's putting the ball away. One more time, catches it, puts it away. We have a player, he will move, the difference on this shot is that watch how he will move his body forward to catch the ball and out quicks the goalie. He's not necessarily worried about how hard it goes. He just moves forward, supports himself well with the left hand, and just outquicks the goalie, puts it right over its head. One more time, catches it, and just throw his body forward. Good body position, good support with the left hand, nice follow through, ball in the cage. On this shot, we have a nice hesitation move. Watch the player will catch the ball, throw a one quick fake, hesitate, and then put the ball in the close close to the goalie. The only mistake that he makes, he pulls the trigger a little bit too soon. He should go a little bit wider with this shot. One more time, catches it, hesitates, then shoots the ball. On this shot, we have a quick turn. We have a broken play off a rebound. The ball is thrown to the postman. He just quickly turns and releases with his wrist. Watch on the slow motion how quick his body's already turned, then the, the, the follows through with the release. Here we go. The body's turned already. Quick release off the wrist. The ball is put away. Again, one more time, kicks it up, body release, nice shot. On this shot, we have a nice new lane being created by the shooter. Watch how you'll catch the ball, then step sideways and put the shot away. Watch on the slow motion, here he comes. Creates a new lane by putting, going straight up, locks the goalie up, and then lean, lean to the left. There you go. From behind, you can really see this. Again, goes up good support with the left hand and then really throw the ball hard from behind again look how he throws his body to the left and really throws the goalie into a fit here the goalie's locked onto his original move until he comes from the side here he comes there's a goalie nice shot here we have a perfect example of a quick sidearm shot watch how you catch the ball go straight up he hesitates just a little and then he just throws a quick sidearm watch in a slow motion there's the hesitation and the sidearm right up in the upper corner. Beautiful shot. Again, hesitation. Watch the good support with the left hand. Watch how these players really use their upper body. There's a support. There's a shot. Nice shot. Three. On this situation, watch how the player will just pick the ball straight up and let it go. Just straight up and let it go. In this situation, the shot must be straight, hard, and on the line. Here we have a perfect combination of a quick pass to a shot. Watch how the player on the bottom of your screen will look early and see that the cage is open. He waits for the pass, catches it, shoots it. Nothing else. It's very simple. Again, watch. He just picks the ball up and shoots it. The quick shot. Very important. Here we have a perfect example of a side fake and step in. Watch he'll fake it. Watch how you throw his body completely to the left. His head is underwater when he shoots this ball. Look, he locks the goalie up, throws his body to the left. There he goes. His body's completely turned around. But that generates so much power. There he goes. And the goalie really cannot lock himself on that play. Watch, he goes left. There's the goalie. There's the shot. Here's a beautiful execution of reading the goalie out. How he'll go up, read the goalie, and then really comes in with a sidestep shot. Watch this. Watch how you come in, opens up his fake. The goalie's up. There he goes, puts high upper corner. Remember how last time he had his body completely laying on the water? This time he throws his body forward. There he goes. Body comes in. There. He's not laying out as much. He puts the ball right on the upper corner. Just a beautiful shot.
What we have tried to accomplish in this tape is uh, the importance of using your upper body, your torso rotations, your wrist, uh, your body position to a shots. A lot of the shots that we have saw tonight, not just on the exercises and the drills that we have did in the beginning part of the tape, but also during the later stage of the tape when we did some situations from right out of the games, is the importance of the players to come out of the water, create new lanes, and execute the shot that needs to be taken. I think many times players are shooting the ball just because they're supposed to shoot the ball. The importance is to get across to these players that they need to have complete control of the situation. They need to know what shot to use, and when that shot is called upon, you must be able to execute it. It's not like, hey, this is luck. No. If the shot reads four or five seconds down and you need to take a high upper corner shot, then you must come up with a high upper corner shot. If there's a player with a hand on top in front of you, then you must throw your body to the left and get rid of that hand and then put the shot away. So again, the importance of shooting drills, the importance of shooting skills is the practice and execution of exactness. Thank you very much.